this is a really difficult vlog to um to to start with and to make uh, I've just been doing a little bit of research around um, the subject matter and uh, it's brought back a lot of memories. While I was working in West Africa, I survived and was the victim of a major terrorist attack. In my line of work, I've often used media to try and help and raise awareness of important subject matters around the world. As a result, I was given the opportunity to help set up and launch a television channel in West Africa. The ethos of the channel was to, in effect, give a voice back to the local uh, West African people. I was made head of production for the channel and had a team of 60 people developing over 100 programs. One of the major ways in which I felt building a good relationship and, and creating trust within uh, the local team was to pray uh, every Friday with them. I'm not the most devout person in the world, um, but it was a good way of breaking the ice and also a great way of uh, understanding and respecting the community and the culture that I was in. One day, one of my colleagues approached me and suggested that we go to a famous mosque within West Africa and say Friday prayers there. I got all the security checks in place, we managed to understand the situation at that time and it was deemed okay for me to go and say Friday prayers at this mosque. While on our way to the, the mosque, uh, I had a very strange feeling um, inside of me, I'm not sure how to explain it, um, but the mosque was slightly outside of the, the zone that we were permitted to be in. Um, I trusted my colleague 100% so I knew that it was it was something that he was used to and something that he knew. However, being a foreigner, it was a little bit jarring for me as I wasn't really too sure uh, what was going on or where this place was. And going through certain hostile environment trainings that I have been through, it becomes a little bit, you become a, on alert. And this was something that I felt a little bit uncomfortable with. Friday prayers is a very important time within the, the Muslim culture and within the Muslim world and as a result um, people make that effort to, to go out and actually pray on Fridays. The mosque itself was completely packed uh, so we couldn't find any space inside. However, we decided that we'd stay outside uh, in the courtyard. When it was time to pray we all got up, we positioned ourselves, we got ready and then over the tannoy we heard the Allahu Akbar. At this moment, the first blast happened. We were all thrown into the wall in front and there was mass confusion and mass panic. I remember at that moment my heart sinking. My ears had completely gone. I was deafened by the sound. So much so that I didn't actually hear the second blast from within the mosque. But as I regained my consciousness, I did hear the third blast. Everyone immediately bolted towards the exits in a blind panic. It is at that point that I heard the gunfire. The terrorists were slaughtering people as they were exiting the mosque. I thought I was going to die. My colleague grabbed me and said to me that he knew a safe place within the ghettos for us to run to. As I followed him to the exits, I remember having to scramble over dead bodies. In the distance I saw women, children, men being slaughtered by gunshots and dropping to the floor lifeless. Both me and my colleague ran into the ghettos. We found a safe house and a safe place um, where we stayed for the rest of the day. I then managed to contact our base and they tried to devise a plan and a way of getting both me and my colleague out. I could hear the gunfire, I could hear the screams of pain, I could hear the victims suffering. It was a complete and utter nightmare. When the military eventually came uh, later on after the massacre uh, and cleared up the entire area, only then me and my colleague were able to get rescued. What's most disturbing about this act is that it was on worshippers who were praying to the same God they claimed to be carrying out the attacks for. When we both got back to base, we were debriefed and I was given the option of coming back to the UK. 
I refused at that point and decided to stay and finish the job I had started. I was not going to allow this cowardly terrorist attack to stop the amazing things that we had built up. When I did eventually come back to the UK, I suffered from extreme post-traumatic stress disorder. I got myself some of the best counsellors and psychiatrists in the UK. No matter how hostile an environment is, no matter how deadly an environment is, there are people who are suffering there and then. I've had the privilege of coming out of that, but those people are still there. They are working day and night to try and make their country a better country. It is the acts of small, narrow-minded individuals which unfortunately tarnish them with the negativity of what's going on. You always see on the news attacks that have happened, you always hear the numbers of people who have died, but you never ever think that you would be one of those people who suffers from that. Or you never ever think that you would be someone who would go through something like that. Islam is a religion of peace and it has been hijacked by narrow-minded people who are manipulating it for their own political gain.